Hi everyone, so I'm back with another video. This one we're actually going to be starting a two-part series, uh, well it's actually three-part, but two parts talking about the actual reproductive system. And this one I'm going to talk about the male reproductive system. I will have one on female reproductive systems and then I'll have one on STDs or STIs, which I'll have that in the third video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so there are some fundamental um, basics of life that all living things must do. And one of the things that all living things must do should be to reproduce. Um, that ensures that that organism can actually survive and pass on its genes to a next generation. So when we're talking about humans or animals um, or just any sexual being, um, there is a system that is very important, and that system is the reproductive system. Now, it serves several purposes. Um, the first one is to produce gametes, as I said here. Now, gametes includes the sex cells. That includes sperm, and that includes eggs. You know, the female tend to produce the eggs. Male produces sperm. So the first thing is to produce them. The second thing is to ensure that those gametes can unite. So you'll have a female or an egg, and you'll have the sperm or the male. They must somehow um, find those gametes together to unite to form a living entity. And through that, um, a life will be created. Just like, you know, you, you know, how you came about, is that your mom had an egg, your dad had a sperm, they came together, united, and formed a zygote, which eventually grew into what you are today. So the reproductive system is very important. So here we're looking at the general anatomy of the male reproductive system, because this video, we're primarily going to talk about the male reproductive systems. So here's some of the gener general um, structures that we see. Um, on the outside, we have the copulation organ called the penis, and we have our testicles, um, the urethra, which is also part of the urinary system. Um, we have our prostate glands. This is showing you seminal vesicles. Um, this is just some of the structures that we see, but we're going to go a little bit more deeper into these structures. All right, so here's a more detailed look at the anatomy of the male reproductive system. Now, on the outside, we have this course showing you a lateral or a side view. It's showing you the scrotum. The scrotum is the sac that contains a very important structure called the testes. Now, inside the testes, there's a lot of things going on. It's like a manufacturing um, center for the sperm, which I'll talk about later. Then we have our epididymis, which is here, and then it connects to the vas deferens. The vas deferens is a very important structure that allows the sperm that's produced um, to then go through to be ejaculated later on. Okay. Then we have um, other structures like the prostate gland. There's a little gland called the cowper's gland, which I'll talk about in a second. I'll give more details to the function of these. Um, ejaculatory duct, we have a seminal vesicle, plays a very critical role. And then so when we go over here to the front on the outside, when we're talking about the cop copulation organ of the penis, there's the opening. Um, there is a foreskin present on the outside of the penis, um, the head of the penis that can be removed um, in a baby when they're born. We see it here. The head of the penis is called a glans penis. This spongy tissue on the inside called corpus cavernosum, very important, um, especially when we talk about erectile and erectile tissues. Um, here's the bladder up here, right above the prostate gland. And we have some other structures here, but the ones I just mentioned are the ones that are more relevant when it comes to talking about the male reproductive system. Now, this uh, table here, this uh, figure, actually looks very simple, but it's a very important figure because what it's talking about are the different organs that we see in the male reproductive system um, and its function. So let's go ahead and get started because this is more talking about where the manufacturing occurs until it gets out.
So here we're going to talk first about the testes and the seminiferous tubules that are on the inside. The seminiferous tubules is where you actually have the sperm being produced. That's like the manufacturing process. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about spermatogenesis in a little bit. That's when sperm is reproduced. Then the sperm will then go to the collecting ducts, with which they can be transported and stored, and then they get to the epididymis. That's the um, sac that's surrounding the outside, like right here. So we have the epididymis right here. Okay, then we have the vas deferens. That's where you will have the sperm being transported. Um, so go back here. This structure here is the vas deferens. So here's the testes that have the seminiferous tubules that produce the sperm. Then we have our epididymis that can actually help in the maturation of the sperm and help transport it. And the transport is the vas deferens. Um, um, remember the vas deferens is known as the sperm duct. Very important. If a female doesn't want to have any more kids and the husband decides that he wants to make sure that he doesn't transmit any sperm, he will have what's called a vasectomy. That's when the vas deferens um, actually gets cut. Okay, so let's move on down. Then we have our seminal vesicles. Um, these vesicles secrete a very thick liquid to transport sperm because sperm doesn't come out on its own. So if you want to take a look at where the seminal vesicles are, here it is. It will provide that fluid that we see as a part of the ejaculatory fluid. Then we have the prostate gland. Um, which also produces a very important secretion into, um, you know, to mix with the ejaculate. Okay, and what this uh, fluid actually does, um, it goes ahead and it will pretty much neutralize the acidic, the acidic type properties that we see in the female vaginal region. It'll also help to neutralize some of that acid that may be in the urethra from the male. Okay, so that's the prostate gland. Then we have the Cowper's gland. The Cowper gland, um, it may secrete some kind of uh, lubricants that help flush out urine and stuff that may actually be inside of the urethra of the male. And this is to help prepare this or protect the sperm from any type of acidic environments that may be there. Then we have the urethra um, that we see here um, that will help with the sperm passing. So just to mention all the stuff, the sperm and all the fluids that are produced by seminal vesicle, prostate gland, Cowper's gland, um, all of these are actually mixed in with the sperm and they will actually be um, propelled through the urethra out through the penis. And this will allow the sperm to leave the male, so it can go ahead and try to find an egg or so forth to reproduce. All right, so once again, here's the testes, here's the epididymis. Remember, this is the sperm production maturation centers right here. Then, once the sperm is produced, it can go through the vas deferens um, till it meets up with the fluids that we see here that will be made through the seminal vesicle. Here's the prostate. We have our Cowper's gland. All of these is to protect and help aid the sperm as it goes through. Um, so this is very, very important here. This structure and this table. I would definitely learn this table because it's very important and it summarizes everything. All right, so we spoke about sperms. Let's actually take a look at the anatomy of the sperm. I'm going to start looking at this one first. All right, so the sperm has the head. The head has a very important part called the acrosome. And the acrosome plays a role in burrowing away or trying to break through the egg outer layer. That's how they can help penetrate and get inside the egg. There um, is a nucleus that have some nuclear vacuoles, which are here. Um, you have the neck region or the mid region, which kind of connects the head to the tail. And in this region, there's a lot of mitochondria. And this is really important for the sperm to have this because they need a lot of energy to actually help them propel their flagella tail, which I'll talk about 
in just like a few seconds. All right, so um, there's very important structure here. Then we have the tail region, which includes a terminal disc that's kind of like the base. And then you have your axial filament, and then you have an end piece. So this is the sperm. And this uh, tail whips like this in a whip-like motion that allows it to propel and go ahead and find um, the egg. Now, if you want to take a closer look, this is showing you a front view. Here is showing you a side or lateral view of the actual sperm. Once again, here is the head. Um, we have the acrosome region right here. There is a membrane that surrounds it. We have the nucleus and nuclear vacuoles. Um, we have um, mito mitochondrial sheaths. So there's a lot of mitochondria here. And remember, that plays a huge role um, in its um, ability to make energy for it to swim. We have our centrioles. And we just have a membrane lining on the outside. So this is just the general structure that we see of a sperm. And just a little bit more detail of what's going on here. All right, so the production of sperm is called spermatogenesis. And when we're talking about spermatogenesis, we start out with a diploid um, originator called the spermatogonium. Now, the spermatogonium goes through a mitotic process and mitosis where it can actually make a copy of itself. And then it goes into that process called meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now, the whole purpose of meiosis is to reduce um, the number of genetic information by half. So you know how we have 46 chromosomes? Well, we don't. So we're 2N. We have 46 because we have 23 pairs. However, we do not want our sex cells, the egg and the sperm, to have uh, 46 because if you get an egg with 46 um, chromosomes and a sperm with 46 chromosome, how are you going to end up with 46 chromosome? That's 46 times 2. We don't need that. So what happens is you have a reduction process. So you have meiosis 1 and then we have meiosis 2. All right, so after meiosis 1, we end up with what's called a secondary spermatocyte. Um, the spermatocyte will go through a round of divisions to form the sperma spermatid, and then it can actually mature into the full sperm that we see. So from spermatogonium, it goes to a primary spermatocyte, which is we see here. Then it goes to secondary spermatocyte. Um, then after the second round of meiosis, then we have our spermatids. And then we have its maturation to form the four sperms. So starting with one spermatogonium, when we're done with spermatogenesis, we end up with four potentially fully functional sperm. Now I said potentially because sometimes things can go wrong. You can have some sperms that's not going to mature correctly. There may be some defects, like it may not be able to have a flagella that will function properly. There are things that can actually go wrong, but for the most part, potentially you end up with four sperms from one spermatogonium in the process of spermatogenesis. And once again, spermatogenesis is the making of the sperm, and this occurs in no other than the testes. All right, so this, you know, all these processes that go on, it goes hand in hand a very important system that I discussed before, and that's the endocrine system. The endocrine system is so critical, especially when we're talking about the um, sexual reproduction, the sex organs, or even the triggering of puberty. So puberty um, is when the body starts to transition from that childhood to that more adult-like, and what that does is allows hormones to be produced that will actually give the characteristics that we see in a male and a female. So here we're just going to start out looking at the hypothalamus. Okay, the hypothalamus um, produces tropic hormones like the gonadotropic releasing hormones, um, 
And what it does is that it triggers the anterior pituitary gland to secrete these two hormones, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. This we see in both male and females, but what I'm going to focus on right now in this video is the male. Okay, in the next video I'm going to talk about what happens with the female. So let's go ahead and take a look what's going on. All right, so the anterior pituitary will secrete gluteinizing hormones as well as follicle stimulating hormones and that will go ahead and it will start the process of the testes to produce testosterone. All right, testosterone is very very important because it's needed for several things. First thing, it needs to help build the male secondary characteristics that includes the penis and the scrotum to grow. It allows facial hair to start growing. It allows deepening of the voice, and that's what we see in males. Um, this testosterone will cause the shoulders to start to broaden. They will start getting hair in different regions of the body, like armpits, as well as the pubic region, and more of a masculine type appearance that we see in males. So the testosterone that is triggered or made helps with this. Another thing testosterone is needed for is for spermatogenesis to actually make the sperm. So that's really, really important. Um, so um, the rise in testosterone levels will cause this to happen, and that's when we see that puberty-type features in males when they start heading into age 13, 14. That's when you really may start seeing it kick in. All right, so you'll see the effects. Okay, so there's a lot of different things that can happen um, when we deal with the male reproductive system and pathologies that can happen. Um, there are hyperplasias that can happen of structures, but I want to talk about one of the number one causes of male cancers outside of, you know, lung cancer. Prostate cancer is actually one of those that we see is common um, when it comes to male type cancers. And this is showing you um, prostate cancer. Here's a prostate, and you may have a growth. And notice, I want you to notice here, um, usually people that have prostate cancer, or even swelling of the prostate for any reason, enlargement, it can cause compression on the urethra. And a lot of times these individuals have a hard time urinating, and the urine may not pass easily. So they have to go to the bathroom more often but not a lot is coming out. Um, so you can see it here. Um, it can be treated depending on what stage. Outcome may be possible if it's caught early. Okay, it's quiz time. Let's see what you remember about the male reproductive system. All right, which hormone is produced by the testes? Remember, we had a signal from the brain that went ahead to trigger this. So in males, the hormone that is produced by the testes is testosterone. Remember that's through the aid of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone that was actually triggered by the gonadotropic releasing hormone. So it is testosterone. In which male structure is sperm made? Okay, remember I said there was a manufacturing center. Um, where was that? That was in the testes. The testes have a structure called seminiferous tubules, and that's where we see the sperm being produced. In which male structure is sperm matured? So there was one region where I said sperm is matured, um, and it can start getting transported from that area. If you said epididymis, you're correct. Which structure is important at transporting sperm into the ejaculate, or is also known as the sperm duct. Okay, so from these choices, scrotum, vas deferens, epididymis, seminiferous tubules, and prostate gland, which one is known as the sperm duct? If you said vas deferens, you are correct. You remember I said when guys have a vasectomy, they actually get the vas deferens cut so the sperm can't go through. Which hormones signal puberty in males? Okay, I kind of said it earlier. Which is the one that we see that triggers puberty? Remember, puberty, um, you can see the physical characteristics once testosterone is produced. 
So there are a few of these on here. You have to select all that applies. That will lead to that event of testosterone being produced. If you said gonadotropic releasing hormone, that's correct because what gonadotropic releasing hormones do, it um, triggers the, the pituitary gland to secrete luteinizing hormones and follicle stimulating hormones. And what that does, it allows the production of testosterone to be produced. From one spermatogonium, so now I'm talking about spermatogenesis, how many potentially functional sperms can be made? Remember, from one spermatogonium, that's like the originator. If you said four, you are absolutely correct. So hopefully you got 100% on this quiz. I tried to make it quite simple. Um, if you did not remember these concepts, please go back and look at the video again, starting from the beginning. And please post a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you learned or how you did on the quiz. So until next time, bye.